It's official, Takashi69 has won his court case, and with the information that we have in this video today, we will be able to tell you guys when he will be finally coming home. If you guys are a 6 9 fan, make sure you guys watch this video all the way until the end, because you are going to be very excited. Also, if you are a 6 9 fan, make sure you leave a like on this video right now, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you would like to join our iPhone 11 giveaway. Now we have finally got some new news coming from Takashi69, which honestly, in my opinion, is most likely going to change the rap industry. Takashi69 has been going to battle now for the last two weeks in his court trial, which will be actually ending here within a few days. But we have got some brand new information coming from 6 9 himself, telling us his release date from his release from being locked up. Now make sure you guys keep on watching this video right now because I am also going to be showing you guys some exclusive footage of 6 9 snitching in court near the end of the video and he's going to be telling everybody how he started his music career as well. But Takashi 6 9 announced the other day that he will be getting released either by the end of this year of 2019 or the latest will be the start of the new year of 2020 which Honestly, I think is going to be a huge day in the rap industry. I honestly can't even remember the last huge thing that actually went down in the rap industry. Like, that's kind of how stale the industry has been lately. So I think with 6 9 being released, it's actually going to be a huge day for the rap industry. A lot of you guys are probably thinking otherwise, but if you give it a little bit of thought, 6 9 is pretty much one of the only rappers out here other than like, you know, Drake and all of those huge, huge guys. But 6 9 is the last rapper to have consecutive Billboard hits. I mean, I'm pretty sure he went, what, 9 for 9 for Billboard hits, which for a rapper that's, you know, not like an A-list celebrity like Drake or anyone like that, that's huge. That's actually kind of crazy to even think about. But I feel like with 6 9s release, this is going to go one to two ways. Because when 6 9 is released, there's either one way is going to be that he will be taken out, literally just days or even a couple weeks after you know he's out and free or he's gonna be start making music again and he will be safe due to 24 7 security which he did say he was gonna buy but nobody's gonna want to create new music with him nobody's gonna want to do features with him no one's gonna you know even want to hang out with him for that matter due to the reason that he doesn't know how to close his mouth while 6 9 was in court snitching he did snitch on 11 9 tray members and also for pretty much no reason at all brought up the names of Cardi B, Trippy Red, Jim Jones, and a few other people as well for absolutely no reason. And now, you know, the law enforcement are going to be investigating all of these rappers pretty much just because 6ix9ine decided to throw their name out in court. So I would imagine that a lot of these other rappers in the game right now are going to want nothing to do with 6ix9ine because he can use whatever he finds out about you one day and he can use that in court one day if that ever happens again. That's just what a lot of rappers in the industry are saying as of right now. Now, I mean, there's tons of clips of rappers calling him, you know, a rat and all kinds of things like that. And even 50 Cent, who is actually really good friends with Takashi and even did business together when he was on the outside. He did an interview with Breakfast Club and said to never call him or hit him up once he's released because 50 Cent now wants nothing to do with him. But 6 9 will be getting released from lockup for snitching on people in his court case and I'm actually going to be showing you guys some official court video right now of 6 9 snitching in his court case. Now make sure you guys keep on watching this video because you're definitely going to want to hear this. And I will show you a little video clip of him in there. Other than that, it will just be audio of his court case. Hope you enjoy. Uh, Takashi, uh, Takashi 69, um, Picks, yeah. Mr. Hernandez, where were you born? Uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn. How far did you go in school? <sighs> About the 10th, uh, 11th grade or so, like that. What? Mr. Hernandez, are you currently in federal custody? Whoa. Yes, sir. Approximately when did you start living in federal custody? Uh, about no, uh, November 18, 2018. What were you arrested for? Uh, racketeering charges, um, you know, uh, violent crimes, shootings, uh, drug distribution. At some point, did you decide to cooperate with the government? Yes. When did that happen? Uh, a day after, um, November 19th, the day after, uh, 
we, we was taken down. In connection with your cooperation, have you pleaded guilty to certain crimes? Yes. What crimes did you plead guilty to? Um, I believe there was uh, nine counts of racketeering, um, shootings, uh, and, and drug distribution. And you listed racketeering as one of the crimes to which you pleaded guilty. Were you a member of any gang? Yes, sir. What was the name of the gang that you were a member of? Uh, the Nantre Bloods. Nantre Blood. Approximately when did you become a member? Uh, around, uh, I would say November of 2017. What sorts of things did nine trade members do? I'm sorry? What sorts of things did nine trade members do? Uh, we participated in a lot of, uh, you know, violent crimes, um, robberies, assaults, sorts of that nature. Mr. Hernandez, do you recognize anyone in the courtroom who was a member of Nine Trey when you were a member? Yes. Who do you recognize? And if you, if you can identify that person, uh, can you identify where they're sitting in an article of clothing that that person may be wearing? Hob, Anthony Ellison has a gray suit on, uh, and uh, Nuke Ajumai Mack has the brown suit on, with the white thing on his head. Your Honor, may the record reflect that the uh, witness has identified Mr. Mack and Mr. Ellison? Yes, the record reflects that Mr. Um, um, Hernandez, in sequence, uh, uh, identified uh, Mr. Ellison and then Mr. Mack. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Hernandez, we'll turn back to Nine Trey in a minute. Before we do, I'd like to ask you some questions about your life before Nine Trey. Where'd you grow up? Uh, I was raised and lived in uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn. Where'd you go to school? Um, for elementary, I went to PS59. Uh, for middle school, I went to Walmer Campos. For elementary, I went to PS59. Uh, middle school, Juan Merle Campos. And uh, high school, for the time being, went to Legacy High School. Yeah, Legacy High School. Did you work? Yes. What'd you do? Uh, I started working at the, I want to say the age of 13. My first job was at uh, the Greenpoint Youth Court. It's a job that handles like misdemeanor cases for youth, um, where the youth acts in like a bailiff, judge, jury, youth advocate, community advocate type of thing. I did that about for two months. I'm not, uh, Mr. Hernandez, I'm going to cut you off. I think you are uh, speaking so close to the mic that you're blurring some of your words. Move back a tiny bit to the mic, but keep your voice up and keep speaking slowly. Thank you. So I did that for about a year. Uh, I didn't make a lot of money doing that, so I started working with my brother. Uh, busting tables. I did that for about a year and a half. Then I uh, did a job at a grocery store named Stay Fresh and Grill, where I worked as a delivery boy. I did that uh, about for two years. Uh, I worked up to register. Shortly after that, uh, I landed another busboy job, became a rapper. You said that you, you started a music career, is that right? Yes. Approximately when did that happen? I'd say around uh, 2014. Uh, and, and how did it come about? Well, at the, at the store I was working in, um, Stay Fresh and Grill, there was a guy under the name Peter Rogers, always, always come in there, buy a tea and like a tilapia, some peanuts, stuff like that. He asked me if, uh, if, I, if I made music and if I rapped. Uh, and I was like, no. And he was like, well, you know, got the image for it, you look, look cool. I was like, you know. I took that in consideration and we started making music um, from the from the deli. And, and again, this is around 2014? Yes, sir. Like late 2014, like September. So when you started making music in around 2014, what type of music were you making? It was more of a, like a rock and roll uh, rap. Approximately how many records or songs did you release? Uh, eight, I believe. I believe around eight. Did you go on any tours? Yeah. Where did you go? Uh, Eastern Europe. Um, I toured in uh, Bratislava, Slovakia. Bratislava, Slovakia. Uh, Prague, Czech Republic. Brno. Brno, Czech Republic. 
St. Petersburg, Russia, and uh, Moscow. Were you making any money at this time as a as a as a metal rap performer? Um, I mean, for all those shows, I made about like two thousand dollars profit. I, I did it just for the experience. Now, Mr. Hernandez, did there come a time when the type of music that you recorded changed? Yes. Approximately when did that happen? Uh, around uh, it, it changed in September of two thousand eight uh, seventeen. Now, directing your attention to September 2017, did there come a time when you filmed a music video in Brooklyn? Yes, sir. Where in Brooklyn? Uh, Bedford Stuyvesant, uh, Brooklyn, um, on Madison between uh, Tompkins Avenue and Troop. Do you remember the address? I believe I want to say it's 370 Madison. 370? 370. <laughs> Ms. Harney, can we please pull up for the witness what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 202? Mr. Hernandez, do you see Government Exhibit 202? Yes. What is that? 370 Madison. Is that a photograph of 370 Madison? Yes, sir. Does it fairly and accurately depict the way 370 Madison looked? Yes, sir. Your Honor, the Government Office Government Exhibit 202. Any objection? None, Your Honor. No, no objection. Proceed. May we publish it, Your Honor? Yes. So you filmed the music video in, in front of 370 Madison? Yes, sir. What was the name of that song? Gummo. Gummo. G U M M O. Tony, we can take down the two Fire. Mr. Hernandez, how did the filming of Gummo come about? Um, around August of 2017, uh, I made I made the song Gummo. What?